In this session, we shall discuss the Bioconductor website. So here in Safari, I've navigated to the uh, Bioconductor website, and let's make uh, it a little bigger so we can see what goes on. The Bioconductor website contains a lot of useful information. Um, it's organized into these uh, four different categories here with install, learn, use, and develop. Under installation, there's a, a short uh, description of how to install Bioconductor that we will cover in a different session. There's a lot of good information here. Usually when I go to the Bioconductor website, it's to find information about a given software package. So down here under use, we have software. We, we see that Bioconductor divides its packages into software packages, which are the main workhorses annotation packages, which are pre-packaged annotation information from various databases, and finally experiment packages, which contain data from published papers, uh, which are used for tutorials, um, uh, examples, and sometimes to document an entire reproducible research workflow. So let's click on the software tab. And here we get a list of all the Bioconductor packages in the, in the current release. Out to the left here, we have a number of keywords. These are called BioC views or Bioconductor views, and they are keywords that package authors use to check their different packages. The intention is that this will allow you to easily find uh, packages of interest for a specific statistical method or biological question. For example, if we expand the biological question, we can see that there's 13 packages that um, where the authors have decided that they uh, deal with alternative splicing, um, and there's uh, 173 uh, packages dealing with differential expression. Let's, let's find one of the packages and explore uh, the package page a little bit better. I'm gonna go for the uh, DEC package that is near on the differential expression. That's a little weird. Uh, let's see what other we have. What other things we have down here? Let's just expand out to the to the top, and uh, over here in the search tab, search for DEC. So I click on the packets, and this is the packets uh, homepage in the release version of Bioconductor. There's some standard information about what the, a very brief overview of what the packets does, and some authors and some citation information. Um, down here under the packets, I see things such as uh, 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 which other packages uses the packets and what it's being used for. But most importantly, under the documentation tab here, I can see a list of vignettes and news files. In this case, the packets has a single vignette, which is called analyzing RNA-seq data with the DE-seq packets. Package vignettes are something that belongs in all our packages, but Bioconductor has mandated that software packages has a vignette. And this is really the first place to go for information about a given package. Some packages have very short vignettes, some packages have extremely long vignettes, sometimes hundreds of pages, and some packages have many different vignettes. In this case, there's a single vignette, and let, let's click on the PDF here, where we get taken to a long description about what the package does and how to use it. Uh, we won't really uh, cover it right now, but you can see here in the contents that the package is, or the vignette is roughly 23 pages and, and has a lot of uh, important information. Let's scroll down here. There's like usually a, a, a an example of a, an analysis on a specific data set. There's some plots and a lot of really useful information. This can be incredibly valuable and I would always encourage any user to start off by looking at the package vignette when they're, when they're using a new package. Another thing that fewer packages utilize, but which I sometimes find very useful, is the package news file. So the idea is that the package author can, can put in information about what changes from version to version. This can sometimes be a lifesaver, and if there's a package you're using a lot and that's critical to your workflow, it's not a bad idea to look at the news file every time a new version is released or a new version of Bioconductor is released. So let's click on this. This is a text file, and we can see here that the author has added some information about uh, uh, what has happened in the various versions. This is uh, probably out of date. You can see the last uh, comment was uh, added in 2012, in late 2000, or the second half of 2012. I'm pretty sure that this package have changed since then.
You can also get package vignettes. Uh, uh, they, they in install into R. Um, so if we, for example, switch over to R Studio for a moment. Uh, here I'm back in R Studio. Over here to the right, I have the help panel, and I've gone to the home part of the panel. Um, I can click down here on packages, and then I can now I navigate the packages that I've installed in my local installation of R. In this case here, I find I don't have DEC, but uh, let's take another one. Let's take a package such as uh, BS Genome. Uh, here, there's a here's an index of all the functions in the package, um, but up here at the top we have a link to a description file. We have the user guide, package vignettes, and other documentation, and we have the package news. So let's click on the uh, vignettes. We can see this package has two different vignettes: something called "How to Force BS Genome" and then "Efficient Genome Searching with BioSprings and BS Genome." Here we have it in PDF, some source code, and the R code. There's also a link to the package news. Again, uh, the author started the news file and didn't really add a whole lot of information since he wrote it. So these are two good examples, I guess, that the news file can sometimes be of limited uh, utility. You can also get uh, to this package vignette this a little bit easier in RStudio. In RStudio, we have this panel. In this case, in my setup, I have it over to the right. That's called Packages. I click on Packages, and these are the packages that I've installed. And if I click on it, say Bump Hunter, I get taken to the help page for the package again, and I can navigate down to the vignette. Let's go back to the Bioconductor uh, web page. And let's get to the uh, home of the page. So other useful information here uh, is down under the uh, uh, the learn side, and I'm gonna highlight this thing here called common workflows. Workflows is a new thing in Bioconductor. The idea is that they detail even bigger pieces of information than a package vignette. Workflows show how to use multiple packages together to achieve something. Workflows is a new addition to Bioconductor, so we don't have hundreds of workflows at the moment, but the ones we have are quite good, I think, and we are actually working on adding new workflows. Let's click on one of them, and here we have a list of basic workflows, advanced workflows. Let's click on something, let's click on something like sequence analysis, and uh, we get a document, in this case an HTML document, and there's a fairly long a description of how to use various packages to together. In this case here, this is a complicated diagram about which different packages in R are used at different stages of a um, sequence analysis workflow. And there's a lot of useful, if short, information uh, down below here. The idea is that you might go to a specific package vignette to find more information about a specific package. This workflow here gives you some overlap. Uh, sorry, some overview. We also, in uh, Bioconductor, host a lot of courses uh, all over the world, uh, short courses. And here I click on the course tab, and here's a list of all the different tutorials uh, which we are allowed to post uh, from recent uh, courses. A few months ago, we had the Bioconductor 2015 conference, and here's a number of tutorials that was presented at this conference with uh, in this case, either PDF or HTML. These are written by typically experts in the field. Let's click on the flow cytometry one. Um, and here there's a nice a little up-to-date workflow on how to analyze flow cytometry data. This is great for self-learning, but um, the uh, courses uh, can be a little, it's not so well organized. And it's most useful if you can find a recent course detailing what you are interested in. So here, uh, you have to do a little bit of searching and digging in order to find the, uh, the the useful information. But there's a lot of good stuff here. This is not the first place I would go for information, but it's there and it can be incredibly useful.